speak not on behalf of administrators. I be speak on behalf of parents, educators, students who demand changes. Thank you. Let me just first address um, some of the comments by the Real Estate Association talking about TIFs. TIFs actually have been used as a slush fund for billionaires and corporations that today continue to try to blood the, the suck the life out of our city for profit, for greed, and demonizing teachers, students, people of color. What we have today is an opportunity to bring teachers, the students, communities across the city to get the very basics. How is it possible that we don't have transportation for kids with disabilities? That is a shame. Shame on that. For a state who defunds black and brown education, I have a message for the state. You owe the city of Chicago and Chicago Public Schools $1.1 billion because kids in Wilmette deserve the same education that kids in the city of Chicago. I tell you that this politicization of the issue, and I speak directly to the CEO, when you were CFO of public schools, there was no problem getting funding, even when it came to take loans, to make sure that our kids have the same opportunity as other kids. What is different now? What is different now is that we have a mayor, a black mayor, who was a social studies teacher that is fighting to rip off corruption from the city of Chicago, corruption for Chicago public schools, and to make sure that never again we have a city council that's privatizing parking meters, taking the people, raising property taxes, and putting the burden on working people to benefit these corrupt individuals. I just saw Mr. Rangel here. You all remember the United, United Neighborhood Organization, the Charter Network. Where are they? Where are they? They cannot even call themselves UNO anymore. That's how corrupt they are. And I tell you that are we here right now, we hear right now from parents, from Velma Thomas. I'll give you examples, CEO. And I don't care about the language that you use, co-location. I was, yes, it was relocation. The school closures are unacceptable. And if you want to stop and put it in writing and take it to the state. I don't play games here. I left the classroom so that this doesn't happen again. And it gives me a deja vu. When people were clapping for school consolidations, the school closures, more charter schools, the chaos, the violence that we see today, a result of the same corrupt individuals. And I tell you that Velma Thomas was promised, Velma Thomas was promised a quality childcare center, and they delivered. You are carrying the waters of the Archdiocese of the city of Chicago because it is cheaper to get the school back into their hands for $2 million than relocating for $7 million and give a favor to the Archdiocese. Shame on you. And I tell you directly, I tell you that it's important that today in the city of Chicago, we stand up for teachers, educators, parents, the most vulnerable. No corporations, no billionaires, people who soak the money out of our city like a sacred cow, billions of dollars. This Illinois Real Estate Association has the audacity, the audacity to take us about tip dollars. We're putting tip dollars where it belongs, in the schools, in to create housing, to create change in our city. And what we want to make sure, and you can shout all you want, because I know who you represent. I want to make sure that I represent, I represent our city. That's what we are demanding, that the thief surplus, by declaring a thief's expiration, brings $400 million back into our schools, back into our communities. That's what we're doing. And I tell you, that it's time, it is time that the Board of Education holds CPS accountable. So we have case workers, so we have librarians, so we have staffing in our schools. Our children just survive a pandemic, a pandemic that has left them vulnerable, social emotional needs. I see the violence in Little Village every single day. Where is the after school programming? Where is the coordination with CPS and the Park District? Where is it? And I tell you that for $360,000 a year, I demand that the CEO pick up the phone, especially when we have tragedies in Benito Juarez, when we have two kids that were killed in the city campus. We Alderman demand that a change. Seconds remaining. We demand a change so we have a plan so it never happens in any school, nowhere. Where is the plan? And I read it, read it. Chuck Beat 
in March 31st, 2024, an investigation that clearly showed the negligence, the incompetence. And I remember that we came here for change. I did not come here to carry waters for corporations or for corrupt politicians who now say vote for Fredro, but yesterday were in Trump rallies. I am here for my community, and I will be fighting for our kids. And if the CEO doesn't change, I will demand his resignation. Si se puede.